Hello and welcome back to more 3D dot game heroes. In our last video, we powered up, got ready for the flame temple, and we made our way up here. So today we're going to be starting off the dungeon. Hopefully we can get through it and take on the boss in today's video. This is actually the fifth dungeon of the game now. We've done the grass temple, the forest temple, the desert temple, and the aqua temple. So today is the flame temple. I'm excited to see how this is going to play out. Now as a huge old school Zelda fan, I'm really surprised at myself that I've left this on my backlog for so long now. I can't believe I hadn't played this game sooner. Having so much fun getting through this one. Hopefully it doesn't become too difficult in the end. We still have another temple after this and I'm sure there's going to be some sort of final boss tower we got to make our way through. And these temples certainly are getting a lot larger and a lot more difficult as we go. I will say the original Zelda could have used this reflect spell. That would have made taking on whiz robes a lot easier. Now I did want to take some time in today's video just to thank all the viewers on my channel. Uh, specifically today the reason is it was about a year ago I really started taking this channel a little more serious. I mean about a year ago we had maybe five subscribers people weren't really watching the channel and now about one year later we have about 1200 or so subscribers getting close to 1300 within the year so there's been massive growth on this channel in a year at least for my happy little gaming channel that just kind of plays video games so i just wanted to say Thanks everyone for the last year, and thanks for watching the videos. You guys are true legends. Now one thing I have been considering is putting something together at the end of this playthrough to maybe celebrate um, the full year of kind of putting effort into this channel and some of the things that have come from it. Um, what I was maybe thinking of is just like some highlight clips from all the games we've played over the last year and just kind of showcasing how this last year has gone on the channel. So if that's something you guys would be interested in, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm being foolish or maybe it's a good idea. You'll have to let me know. So looking back at what we played over the last year, uh, about a year ago we were playing, I believe it was The Outer World, then we did Mass Effect 1, 2, 3, Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, we did Detroit Become Human, Beyond Two Souls, House of Ashes, that was one of the Dark Pictures anthology. Uh, we did Ocarina of Time 4K, the texture upgrade. Uh, we did Stray, we did The Quarry, uh, what else? Sonic Frontiers, uh, we did The Devil in Me, Psychonauts 2. I'm sure there's a couple other ones in there I'm missing too, but we played a lot of games in the last year together. And again, I just want to say thanks for everyone who's uh, stuck around and watched some of our videos throughout the year. The channel wouldn't be what it is without all you guys. Now back to the task at hand, we still have a flame temple to take on. Kind of excited to see what today's boss is going to bring. Uh, so our first temple was the grass temple. It had the centipede at the end. Our next temple was the forest temple. It had the wasp as a boss. Uh, after that, we did the desert temple next, and it had, it was a giant stone golem. Uh, after that was the aqua temple, which we did last, and we just took on a giant octopus. 
So I'm kind of interested in what today's uh, fire-themed boss is going to be. This temple is massive. There's three floors of it, too. I'm trying to get my bearings and see where we need to be going at this point. bit of a puzzle with these blocks too we gotta kind of raise and lower them and work our way around from other directions to get through which considering we're going up and down multiple floors gets very confusing in this temple actually one thing that is kind of funny if you're playing this game is uh when you get to this temple, if you leave the temple, uh, Lee will reappear like, Hey, I made it out safely. And then if you re-enter the temple, Lee will be like, I just can't help myself. And we'll go back and get themselves blown up a second time. It's kind of humorous. No matter how many times you leave the temple and re-enter, they'll keep getting themselves blown up. Just for the sake of being missing during the story. I believe it's actually the same in the Aqua Temple, too, where they get captured by the octopus. If you leave the temple without beating it, they'll reappear saying they escaped. But then when you re-enter the temple, they'll get themselves captured again every time. Now, I think those things on the floor actually do damage if we're near them when they erupt, so I'm kind of avoiding them. Seems like we need our Reflect spell in almost every room of this dungeon. Which is weird, because like, we've picked up multiple magic powers since then, and... Although we use Freeze once in a while when there's like flames in our way, we don't really require that normal map power at all, really. We seem to fall back on Reflect more than anything. Parallax helps with the occasional puzzle, but we don't need it very often. Okay, here's finally the switch to switch between the red tiles and blue tiles on the floor. So now we can work our way backtracking through the rooms we've already been to, except now we'll be able to pass where the blue tiles were blocking us. This is kind of like the big puzzle of this temple, is being able to work between the floors and switch the uh, tiles that are in the way. Very much a, a Link to the Past puzzle. I remember them introducing that kind of thing in that game. These guys are kind of like this game's version of the Dark Nuts, where they can uh, only been be hit from behind. Just trying to be safe with Reflect here. So we really are a lot weaker the minute our sword isn't fully powered up doesn't have the reach or do the same damage. Okay, we should be able to reach a new part of this dungeon now. I think these blue tiles were actually blocking us from entering this direction earlier. Now one thing I have been wondering, and if you've played it you'll have to let me know, well if you've played both, um, if anyone's played this game and Tunic, 
You have to let me know which game did you find more challenging. I know I'm gonna eventually end up playing Tunic, so... When I do, I'll announce my results, what I thought was tougher. But I always hear that game's like, uh, kind of a very challenging top-down Zelda-like game, so... It seems much different from this one, but... They're both kind of top-down Zelda-like games, and they're both very challenging, so... I kind of compare the two a lot. Okay, seems like we need to go up and to the left. But we need to find a key somewhere. We also need to, uh... Somehow shut down those red blocks now so we can get to this treasure chest. Kinda glad we've been upgrading our magic this far. I mean, I'm sure I could have done it much more, but... We seem to at least have plenty of magic to get through this. And it's pretty forgiving about giving you refills every time you use the reflect spell. Oh, this guy's gonna be tough to deal with. Do we need to go downstairs to turn off those red blocks? Just wanted to take these guys out to see if there is um, some sort of treasure chest for defeating them. Sometimes there is, and we're looking for a key, so I need to be on the lookout for it. Nah, nothing for taking those guys out. Okay, now that we're down a floor, let's try and find a switch to turn on the red blocks and go back up. We also haven't been uh, to the left and up to the north from here. But we do have the floor switch here to turn on those... Um, turn, on the, turn off the red block so we can get to that puzzle. This guy's going to be annoying, isn't he? Yeah, I just really don't want to take damage this late in the, the dungeon. Mind you, if we do get towards the boss, uh, we can turn on that warp back to the start of the dungeon. I might actually go and get some, like, potion refills and upgrades and things and get ready for the boss properly. The last boss was a lot tougher than some of the ones we've seen. They've been getting progressively harder. The stone golem and the, uh, octopus were some tough challenges. Okay, so to get through here, we're going to need the blue blocks turned off. Uh, let's queue up with the reflect spell. I'm really hoping this chest will have our key in it. We're already facing enough challenges with the block puzzles. We don't need to be endlessly lost looking for a key. A red key? Huh. Not sure if that's what we're looking for, but we'll take it. Don't want to load. I want to save. Now that we've found our key... Just in case anything happens...
Last thing I want is to make it this far into a dungeon and have the game freeze or something. No enemies in here? Oh, we found Lee. I found a treasure box, but then I got locked inside. But I found this in it. We got the boss key. The orb can't be far. Let's go. Okay, so it seems like we just need to solve that puzzle now with the blue blocks to get out of here. So if we can lower those blue blocks, we can get past them to the boss area and we now have the key to get in there. We haven't found the dungeon item, however. I hope I don't need it to take on the boss. Oh jeez, they're shooting arrows at us everywhere. This room is miserable. Oh, we got a second key. That'll be helpful. Let's get out of here. We're actually looking for a floor switch, not a second key, but we'll take it. Yeah, I feel so much weaker with this sword. Especially because it doesn't have pierce, like it'll, it won't go through obstacles. Well, at least we found Lee and our keys. I was going to say I wonder what happens if you leave Lee in the chest, but I guess you kind of have to open it to get the boss key, so it wouldn't really be an option. Okay, so now we just need a floor switch to turn off these blue blocks. Have we been in this room already? Like, was that door just locked to us before? If we go this way, I think we can go down the stairs and um, turn on the floor switch that way. Small block. That was not our dungeon item. And we can no longer go this way. Okay, so we're going to have to find a different way to get downstairs to turn on the... turn off the blue blocks. Oh, this should do it, I think. Of course, once they're uh, turned off, we might have to loop our way around a different direction to get back up here. It seems like we're kind of in the ending stages of this dungeon now, at least. Oh, uh, we can go downstairs from here, too. Nope. Not gonna get hit by that guy this late in the dungeon. At least he's on the other side of the wall now.
Okay, here's the floor switch we need. But we won't be able to come back the way we came in, so we're gonna have to loop our way around and go up the stairs to our right, I believe. Alright, let's take on this dungeon's boss. We're gonna have to come back and find the dungeon item later, but at least we can mostly finish this up. Get the orb and find out what power it'll bring us. Alright, now that we're at the boss, let's save. Right, so from here we can warp out and refill all our health refill potions and power up. So let's go do that. Alright, it's boss time. We have... A giant dragon. Okay, this doesn't seem too bad. As long as we can keep the power on our sword up. We can hit him from a distance and try and avoid his attacks. Oh no, he has a shockwave when he lands. We really have to run to get away from that in time. Okay, this is going to be tougher than it looks. Oh, he's just spamming that attack now. Do we have to hit him while he lands? It's going to be tough because we also have to avoid that shockwave. And he doesn't stay down very long. Maybe if we use a bomb. Okay, now he's shooting a lot more fire at us. Also hard to tell if hitting his head or hitting his chest is more effective at damaging him. We're for sure going to need our health potions here. Luckily we have three of them. I was kind of hoping to use our upgraded sword, but the minute I took our health potion we also took damage. Come on, how much health does this dragon have? This is crazy. Okay, so bombs do damage him. We've learned that at least. Oh, again, as soon as we took our health potion, we also took damage. Really not letting us use our stronger sword. Ah, we got him. Nice. So the boss is defeated. Let's go collect our orb. We'll come back for the dungeon item later, I guess. Just a little shaken up by that boss fight. Got the red orb. You're unstoppable, master. Slaying a dragon is a feat of legendary strength. 
You made such rapid progress, I'm nearly speechless. Now let's get this orb to the sage. We got a wind wing, so I think that's going to do it for today's video. So come see our next episode where we'll collect the dungeon item, figure out what magic power this orb unlocks for us, and make our way to the next temple. Thanks for watching and bye for now.